Welcome back to The Real News Network. We're joined again by Robert Polin. He's the co-founder, co-director of the Perry Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Paul. So first part, we talked about uh, the extent of joblessness mm -hmm. and one of your proposals about how to free up some of the 650 billion dollars sitting in the banks as uh, with government credit or other ways to lower interest rates mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the other which ends up with loans for small business mm -hmm. uh, first of all let, let's just talk a little bit about political will here yeah. because another one of your proposals seems to be a no-brainer which is uh, refurbish retrofit government buildings easy make them uh, green yeah. and energy cons conser conservationist is that the word for it uh, it's a no-brainer and uh, he even talked about it in the campaign but they're not mm -hmm. doing it. Right. I mean, many of the proposals in your article are kind of no-brainers. I mean, Thanks. <laughs> no, no. What I mean by no-brainers no, is when you read them, yeah. it makes it's so obvious. much sense. Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. That, that you would just say, well, why would you just do it? Yeah. So talk about the issue of political will here, because is, is, the, is the hidden secret of all of this is that the, the kind of financial and political elite are going to learn to live with 10% unemployment. In other words, they ain't the ones that are going to suffer. Right. And are, are, are they just getting their heads around to maybe we're into a decade of structural 8, 9, 10% unemployment and so be it? Well, I don't usually discuss these things with the people that think that way, but uh, I, I, you know, just hearing the kind of talk, I think that uh, the Obama leading economists, they probably think, look, you know, we always have downturns and we always come back. And last quarter, the economy grew by 5.7%. So as long as we, as we start to get growth going, so we had a recession, we got out of the super severe crisis through the bank bailouts and the stimulus, and in a couple of years, we're going to be better off. Now, yeah, just, just in your article, yeah, right. it ain't a couple of years. You're saying to get to 4% unemployment and kind of a natural Right. whatever that is, natural yeah. cycle, we could be looking at 2017 or 2018. That's right. Which also could mean the end of any that's democratic right. no, uh, that's control That's the point the that they're not, they're not understanding. And all I did was calculate the, the last three business cycles is how long does it take to get back to, say, 5% unemployment given the normal pace of the last three recessions? How long would it take to get to 4%? And that, that was conceding a lot because this recession is more severe. And so if we took the normal pace to get to 5%, uh, yeah, we're looking at 2017, somewhere in 2017 to get to 4%, who knows? And this is assuming we, you know, we avoid all the landmines that are sitting there in front yeah, that's, of us. That's assuming there's any natural curve that's right. arc to this well, recession. Well, I'm saying let's take the best case and assume there is. And we're still at a, you know, it, the recession was so severe and the, uh, the unwillingness of businesses to start hiring again is so strong that it's, you know, yeah, we're looking at seven, eight years uh, under a normal process to get back to. So, so, so that goes to another part of your proposal. And, and then the, the question I have is, isn't this the, the only real short term fix, especially given the, the, the real politics? in Washington where the Republicans seem to want to block just about everything because it's probably in, the, in their electoral interest that unemployment carries on as long as possible, which is a direct, direct programs, which means government loans money directly to small business. Government hires millions of people to retrofit buildings and build roads and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there really any choice other than that, given, the, given the, all the realities well, the, here? Well, you know, if we're talking about political reality, I mean, we already have a trillion uh, you know, five, six deficit. So uh, I think we'd keep, we got to keep a big uh, level of government deficit spending, but we are sitting on, you know, something close to a trillion dollars that we can mobilize in the private market. So realistically, I think the best political story is to say, yes, let's get the credit system working for ordinary people. Let's get it working for small businesses. Let's unlock that $850 billion that's sitting there. And that to me seems like a realistic story. And you could say, look, we want loan guarantees. We're gonna lower the risk for banks and for businesses, and we're gonna create jobs. Who could be against it? 
So to me, that's that's. Well, let me ask you a technical point. When a bank goes to the Fed and gets this zero percent money, which is supposed to be like emergency loan money, but they've been getting billions of mm -hmm. it, is it a fixed rate of whatever they got it at, or is it a floating rate? Fixed. It's fixed. So yeah. even if rates go up three, four percent, yeah, they're, they're still yeah, they're yeah. still paying next to nothing for yeah. the six hundred yeah. billion. Yeah. Well, yeah. if that's the case, then I mean, if you're going to blue sky this, why not tax it back? I mean, what, what, the, was, hell, that's what the, the hell do they need six hundred billion yeah, of public money that's for? The, that's the other proposal. Uh, if the loan guarantees don't work, I would say yes, but you have to define something that we would call excess reserves that they're sitting on, and then we say those excess reserves should be taxed now. That's probably unrealistic as a political uh, proposal. But I do think that the loan guarantees is realistic because it's a carrot, it's not a stick. Say, look, go make loans and we're going to help you because we're going to lower the level of risk for everybody because we want to create jobs. Again, how could Republicans say no to that? What's the argument against it? It's, it's a way to, if everybody says the problem is there's too much risk. Well, the argument against it is they're going to say that one way or the other, it's going to wind up some kind of public subsidization and, yeah. and, and, there's, and we don't want more debt, which leads to another one of the major points in your piece is that the Iraq war and the Afghan war supposedly are both supposed to be closed down, but the whole issue of the military budget doesn't get, ever get discussed in this context. And, and can you really deal with, with this in a realistic way without facing up to that? Well, you can. Uh, I, of course, it's better, and, and for other reasons, we should stop the wars, as Obama promised in Iraq and Afghanistan. And they're costing, you know, in the next year, by the time we add up everything, it'd be $200 billion. You take out that $200 billion, you put it into state and local governments, you have solved their deficit crisis, at least for this year. So that's, that's the best way to go, and I talk about that in the article. But if that weren't, you know, we'd, I don't want to use that as an excuse, say you must do that or else there's no solution. Right now, the easiest solution, the least politically difficult solution is just say, the government is going to uh, help and guarantee loans for small businesses to get back on their feet, for banks to connect with them, and let's get the thing moving. Again. At numbers that aren't 30 billion, but start approaching six, seven, eight hundred billion dollars. That's right. That's the level that we need. Okay. Thanks for joining us, and we'll look to see whether any of this happens. Because okay. if it doesn't happen, this idea of another eight, seven, eight, nine years of you know close to 10 percent unemployment is yeah. probably what we're all facing. Right. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. Mm -hmm.